We're going to talk about the various grips on the M4. There's a lot of debate these days on the best way. I always say there's, there's never really a wrong way per se if you're really good at it. However, there are some, some techniques that just simply work better in other situations. So while we don't necessarily advocate one grip over another, it's more that we advocate one grip more over the other in different situations. You've got the traditional hand under foregrip method. The pros of this guy is it's, it's comfortable. Um, the, you get excellent support. You can shoot very accurately here, hands underneath. We've got a lot of support on the weapon system. It's, uh, it's kind of the middle of the road. It's excellent for kneeling and also from the prone. You have to remain in the standing. We can kind of can in a little bit, get the shoulder underneath, shoot more like uh, like your accuracy marksman type, marksmanship types. The con of it is when we start getting into street fighting and then in CQB, we don't have the same type of control over the weapon system. Um, when we're trying to shoot faster, we're not going to have the same type of recoil management, um, or at least not optimal recoil management. When we slow it down. You can really see the lack of control over his muzzle he has with the hand under foregrip technique. Then when he does squeeze off some rounds, you can really see the rise and fall inability to actually keep his sights on target. It only gets worse when we start shooting and moving. And here we see the more aggressive we get with it, the worse it gets. You're really trying to drive it up on target, you overshoot the target, it's got to settle back down before you can get accurate rounds out. The next, next grip, the next method we got to talk about is the old broomstick, the vertical grip. The, you know, 15, 17 years ago, whenever it was when the first generation SOT mod kits were introduced, we, uh, all the M4 carbines out there had the, the short carbine 7 inch uh, foregrips. So once we uh, attached a flashlight, uh, an IRL or infrared laser, um, and any other uh, optics, we ran out of room. So the vertical grip kind of made a little sense originally. Um, again, it didn't take us long to figure out that once you start shooting and moving, again, the CQB scenario, um, the Street Fighter scenario, the, uh, the vertical grip, when we press out, it, well, it, on the longer length carbines, longer length uh, carbines and rail systems, we got good control, all right? The weapon's out here, it's supporting all the weight. But on the seven inch, it was back here a little further. But no matter the length of the handguard, what we're getting is a top heavy weapon system. So again, we can see it when we slow down the video, coming up on target. That muzzle's dancing around not optimal control. What we're using a vertical grip for other than a grip is something to post out on, something to press into around walls, over barricades, uh, hoods of the car, so on and so forth, to give us more stability and a little bit longer shot. Um, if I'm working with something a little bit smaller in a vehicle, 10 inch barrel, whatever, and I'm in and out of the car constantly, I want a little more streamlined weapon, I'll forego the, uh, forego the vertical grip. But as far as my ass assault style carbine, my CQB carbine, it's set up quite a bit like this guy, um, still with a vertical grip. The next grip we want to cover is the, uh, the hand around the magwell. The pros of this guy, best I can figure, is it's comfortable. It's comfortable at the low ready, be comfortable on a long presence patrol walking down the street. Um, it's not bad necessarily for a, a prone, longer distance shot, more of what, uh, what we call marksmanship versus tactical shooting. Um, the prone, also the kneeling. It certainly doesn't beat the hand under foregrip method uh, when we have a nice soft palm underneath our foregrip. And uh, we can really get underneath the gun here as opposed to this. Um, 
Another con is when we press out, all right, we're just not as in control of the weapon. Uh, similar to the vertical grip, holding it here makes the gun top heavy, all right? But more than that, we can't do what, what we like to refer to as driving the gun from target to target, or even from the low ready, a target presents itself, and we want to raise the gun up. You see, we get a slight muzzle rise and drop, all right? Because that's just simple momentum. The weapon comes up, all right? and it's got to settle back down. And that's just simply because we got all this weight out here. In slow motion, we can definitely see it. That muzzle runs up over, you know, almost two inches high, settles back down, then has to come back up. Recoil there, it's pretty obvious. 5.56 five, shouldn't be recoiling like that. Um, just the slow motion demo blatantly illustrates the lack of control you have with the Magwell grip. Now, let's say, you know, we are turning corners. So we're not just, you know, our shooter um, isn't just coming from the low ready, but he's turning and moving. So his, his weapon's got to come up and turn to the target. So now we're going to have muzzle rise and the flip. Again, it's blatantly obvious here. Big muzzle rise, settling in the weapon, quite a bit of recoil. You can even tell by uh, Andrew's body language when he's done shooting, he's not happy with his accuracy. All right, again, it, it's just so much less control. So finally, we want to get to, uh, to the grip, the, uh, the thumb over muzzle grip. The, the pros of this guy is that it works really well, close range. And when I say close range, let's talk, you know, 100 meters in when we're running and gunning and CQB. It gives us the most control over a muzzle and allows us to drive the weapon. Not, not just point the weapon at a target, but literally drive it from target to target, aggressively engaging. To properly run this grip, we want it to be hands out, but it needs to be natural. Just a natural length and grip. Um, so we press out. So what we've got here is nice, good control. In slow motion, it's really easy to see how much control you have with the thumb over muzzle method. Here, he rises, drives a weapon right up into the target, picks up his uh, sight picture, lets out two fast rounds, no recoil. Just an excellent demo demonstration of uh, control. So yeah. Running the VTAC 1 to 5 drill here in about three seconds, all clear A zones, it really shows how well that muzzle control works with the thumb over. No rise and falls whatsoever. Driving it from target to target just shows the superiority of the, the C grip or thumb over muzzle method. So as we, we press out, what, what you want to have here is slightly bent elbow needs to be lowered in you know we don't just like in any grip we don't want the chicken wings we don't want our elbows rolled up and out all right and also we don't want to be too far out if he extended his stock right you want your weapon to fit yourself but so if he extends his stock out beyond you know his arm length his his comfortable his fit what we get here is a nice straight arm and if uh if we try to traverse here at our torso he's very limited on how far he can actually point the weapon and uh, turn at the waist. Now if he returns his weapon to what, the way it's set up for him, all right, he can actually turn and face away quite a bit more. If your weapon's set up properly and you're not overextending that support hand, you'll have no issues traversing well over 360 degrees. Standing, even kneeling, it works great. It doesn't work as well as a prone. That's when we transfer back into that more traditional grip, get the uh, arm underneath the weapon and let it set on the, uh, sit on your bones. It really doesn't matter. Any grip you choose, you, you can stand in front of a target at 5, 7, 10, 20 meters and punch pretty little holes just by doing ready-up drills, you know, bang, bang. Even your, uh, your old Mozambique uh, failure drill, bang, 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 to the body, one head, to the body, one head. We can do that all day long and, and punch pretty little holes out of the target. It's when we start shooting and moving that these grips don't quite perform.
So all it takes is just slowing down the shooting and moving. And even more so than the, the static drills, we start really seeing how much that muzzle is up, bounces down. We're looking at inches, inches of movement in the uh, muzzle. That equates to unacceptable accuracy on the targets. You're talking shot groups that are 6, 8, 10 inches. Um, and again, that's, that's pretty unacceptable. But you can actually, instead of getting two shots on per target, per rotation, uh, you're starting to get three, four, five. So here, even more so, we can see the advantages of the thumb over grip. There's no settling, there's no rise, there's zero recoil. So the advantages are clear when we start shooting and moving. Um, need to be open and, and willing to try. I've been on ranges where, where guys just simply will not, will not try a new method. So that's why we still see guys um, shooting with that, that old hand on, on a mag or here, and, and they're simply unwilling to try, <clears throat> pardon me, they're simply unwilling to try the, the thumb over uh, muzzle method. Um, some people say it's a, it's a trend. I was taught to shoot that way over 12 years ago. Um, I know Barnhart and all those guys, you know, were teaching it years upon years ago. And frankly, if you go to the professional tier one units out there, that's, that's just, that's common standard. It's not even, it's not even a question anymore. It's not even debated. Well, at the end of the day, for those of the guys that aren't willing to try the other method, this is the improvement in your shooting that you'll literally see day one. Your same amount of speed, much less tight, much uh, tighter groups. What we try to do with the grips is match the capabilities of the human body, of the shooter, to the situation at hand. And again, the C grip or the thumb over muzzle method is hands down the best method for the close tactical engagement running and shooting, um, running and gunning, whatever you want to call it, in the CQB world, street fighter, um, whatever the, the current trendy terminology for uh, a close range gun battle.